The journey to this point has brought us closer to a useful application written in C++ that uses name brand open source ingredients defined in C. The latest version of this application is now ready to review and enhance. First, let us build a new version and review the source code. The interface for the application can be seen as synonymous with defining the interface for the program itself. The latest version of the application defines a bidirectional relationship between the application and the main window. Two fields are introduced and realized as functions in the interface. And they are implemented as DB file name, get DB file name, which provides a central location for parts of the application to obtain the name of the database. The RSS writer header is introduced and what it does is it has a function that on line 40 was called that initializes the database for the other parts of the application. We also see the other uh, field defined in the application interface uh, named get application name. You can see this as synonymous as uh, get the window title and it's useful for uh, program window dialogues, error messages, and log files. Also, the RSS database has been relocated to the data folder, which would appear to be a more appropriate folder for it to occupy in most circumstances, though there would be cases still for its existence in the project folder as well from a code iteration standpoint. And so the create method still resides in app underscore win dot HPP and um, is implemented in app under app underscore win dot CPP. And so the create function um, helps us uh, bind the application to the main window, but we have also broken out the interfaces so now we have a combination of interfaces for the main window and this benefits us by taking those more intricate parts of the application window components such as the tab view for the headlines frame or the headlines view and situates them apart from the main application window code which now exists to orchestrate the overall operation of the user interface. These intricate details are important and we will spend a good amount of time going over them in detail. So when we look at app underscore win dot cpp we notice that we have a number of variables defined at the module level. Their visibility is confined to the module and we will find that having them defined in this way makes the most sense from a usability standpoint. Several function prototypes are defined extern C as they are callback functions that will be used by GTK. GTK has a number of signals that is defined for the components and these signals rely on callback functions. These callback functions have a certain signature as in um, the expected return type and parameters acceptable for any function meeting the requirements of the callback specification. And so here what I've done is I copied the callback signature out of the GTK code just to be full, completely accurate, paste it in here, change the name so that it corresponds to the code that GTK expects. There are a few 
callback functions for switching the page in the uh, tab interface as well as selecting a headline that exists in a list box. Also there are a number of variables that define window sizes and the RSS data itself. In this particular implementation since there's ever only one instance of the RSS feed data active at any one time it works to our advantage to have it defined at the module level on, line, on that uh, line just shown. And then we have the window itself. Although there's a pointer to the window, at no time are any of the widgets dynamically allocated or is there any dynamic memory management at this application level. So there are only stack allocated pointers. What GTK does behind the scenes in terms of creating these pointers is GTK's business. All we know is the functions that we call from GTK return pointers. So here's a function that its overall objective is to return the actual size of the display monitor in which the window is running so that we can determine the appropriate size for the display monitor. And through my research, my spelunking through the GTK documentation, I discovered that a number of functions are obsolete. These are the type of functions that traditionally you would use to obtain the size of the windows or the screens. But GTK has changed that and it would appear that I have chosen just the right time to um, delve into the depths of GTK because a number of functions that I previously would have um, resorted to are now um, marked obsolete and I took the opportunity to um, infer which functions are not obsolete and would serve the same purpose. So through an elaborate chain of events you have to obtain a monitor or screen and display and then finally once you have a monitor you can get a monitor geometry that will describe the according to the name the, mo the geometry of the monitor both the x, y uh, coordinates and the width and height. And that can be used to set the initial size of the window when the program starts up. So here's our tabs that we've been working uh, with throughout this process. And this is the tab interface in a more um, intricate uh, definition. And this particular module will become important later on this is the article's frame. This is this is the frame in which the tabs are which the tabs reside. And so this is the um, headlines frame and the logic for it. And what I wanted to do here was calculate an appropriate width for the headlines uh, for the tabs the group of tabs that we're going to have so that they take up a good portion of the screen but still leave a, a good amount of space uh, for the article content that we're going to going to show later on. And so as the headlines tab is getting set up um, Basically, we call back into the application. That's where the bidirectionality comes into play. And we find um, that we can grab the uh, database file name and use that to get the RSS feed names that we can use to generate the tabs. And you'll notice that the for loop looks um, simpler, but that's really disguised. All we're doing is moving code around but doing it in a way where the different areas of code are in 
uh, proper logical groupings. So there's our callback handler that we had commented out. We are finally using it. And what happens is when, the, when a tab is clicked, that callback handler will activate a function, in this case, headline view switch page, and it will go through and um, execute logic relevant to that tab. And since the logic is the same for all tabs, basically you are filtering on the feed name into the database to bring back the headlines that correspond to that feed name. And then there's a function defined in the headline frames uh, module itself. It's a more intricate function for listing out the headlines. And this particular uh, uh, function serves two purposes, not only to list out headlines, but also to refresh the list of headlines. So if new data comes in, let's say we get to the point where the RSS application auto-updates on a periodic basis and the program is open for an extended period of time, this will be used to affect the proper refresh of the data. At least the template is there for doing so. So the RSS feed data is retrieved, the headlines, and the list box is created. And we loop through the individual headlines and we detail out how the headline rows will look. And then we associate the list box with a scroll bar, uh, a scroll window, and affiliate that with the tab itself. And so the scroll bar window remains glued to the um, a, a relevant tab and where you see the, the uh, line of code where we have a bin um, that's where we're extracting the scroll bar window and so when each uh, row is selected a function is called here we're setting up a signal handler for um, the list box row uh, for selection we marked it X turn C so that there are no uh, compatibility issues between C++ and C and then we're able to um, trigger call of, of the actual function we want which is um, in the headline frame module as well. So that's what uh, headline uh, view select row is. Um, it calls back into the headline frame and then the headline frame calls back into the app win uh, module in order to access a text buffer. The text buffer is going to contain the actual article summary and optionally the article contents as much uh, article content as the RSS feed um, decides to provide. And so when each row is selected, each uh, list box line is selected, a relevant article text is updating the uh, this text buffer and this text buffer is going to efficiently handle the exertion of a large amount of text. It's the same text buffer that um, various editors, IDEs, development environments use um, so it's industrial grade. So when a article, when a headline is selected and the view button is clicked we use the relevant signal off of the button to um, open a window in the browser. So we use this function, show URI on window, which is provided by GTK. And what this function does is it figures out what is the default web browser, and then it opens that default web browser and shows the article, or shows, in this case, shows the article, but uh, shows the content at the given URL. So this is the article frame. This basically structures the overall window at a very high level. That's why it's listed last because it's um, actually added first. All the other contents are added into it and then um, it is added to the window. So when the window runs it's going to have this 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 pane. It's called a, a GTK pane. It's a it's a pane layout that gives you either two 
uh, vertical strips or two horizontal strips. And so you can lay out elements, but it's flexible, so you can resize it with a mouse. So you can make the left side smaller or wider, you know, and or if it's going vertical, you can make uh, one pane uh, higher or lower than the other. And so let's build this and run it and see what it what it looks like. And in this case, it will make sense to review um, the build and source directories. Let's clear everything out, and then we're going to re-upload the build contents, re-upload re the, um, the build scripts and the source code, and then build the entire thing from scratch. So this is a fresh, fresh compile. And for a fresh compile, it actually doesn't take very long. And now let's download a copy of this from the build server to the local desktop environment and then run it. And there it is. So not only do we have the tabs and the headlines from before, but on the right side of the screen we will see the uh, title that represents the feed and we're going to have content as well as a view article button. The defaults in GTK are good uh, when it comes to the buttons behavior and as we click through we're going to see content populate on the right side. But there is a bug and the bug is a, it's not a technical bug per se, but it's a combination of um, how we have aggregated the, um, the content on the right side. The left side is absolutely perfect. It wasn't before, you know, but I fixed all of that. But um, the left side um, is perfect, but the right side needs some work. And prior to that, there were some issues getting both sides to work well when you resize the window. But I have stabilized that. But there was some work that remained on the, uh, the article content uh, view. And so let's take a step back and see if we can gather what needs to be done here. And this will be a good opportunity to try a few things. So there is this concept of expansion and fill. So you can take a widget and it can fill up all the space in an automatic layout scenario. Let's try one theory where the expansion is causing the issue. Let's deactivate automatic expansion for the article because that seems to be the issue. It's expanding too much and in an automatic layout system these types of issues are extremely common and so let's see if it's an issue of automatic expansion well we've turned off automatic expansion but we still have the issue so what 
if it has to do with automatic fill what that what fill means is that whatever space is available after all other elements have acquired the the relevant space that they, they need use that all of that remaining space for the last widget or whatever widget comes first in this case to fill up that space so when you have a a article content box like we do we we tend to want to have that fill up the space and we have this v expand option as well let's turn that off so we left the fill on but we're going to turn off v expand and see if that has anything to do with the issues we've observed so that looks a little better but although that seems to solve the problem that's not quite what we're looking for we do have access to the view article button that's really what prompted the modification up oh, and we saw one that went way past so um, we got some improvement but not the improvement that we're looking for I wonder if setting an explicit size would fix this problem because it seems the issue is related to the article space there taking up too much room so if we just said okay let's use a brute force method let's just fix this size in place let's say a height of about 400 should do it and by setting it to a height of about 400 and let's turn off that fill at the same time and we'll keep the width auto sizing so the width will continue to automatically size but the height we want to set to 400 um, we by using absolute sizing right and absolute positioning we can use a more traditional method for uh, mitigating a layout problem of this nature let's see if that does the trick So let's send the code, let's build it, and then get a new version. We are a pro at that particular process by this point. And so we got the new codes and the new executable, and we're running it. And let's see if our absolute sizing works. And immediately we notice that, no, it doesn't work. So when it comes to software development, there's really no such thing as tricks, right? It's really about does the logic work? So let's find out what's the most logical course of action for resolving this. So when I take a step back and I think I've come up with a good rule in these situations and there's only one rule, one thing you need to remember or ask yourself are other people using the same type of software and having these types of problems? And the answer is unequivocally no. The GTK documentation itself uses this same component and it demonstrates the prescribed way to use it. But what I neglected to do is observe the documentation um, to a level where I mirrored the examples with greater precision. And in this case, we have an issue with the scroll bars. If you read the documentation, the GTK documentation closely, what you'll notice is that the scroll bar um, there's a there's a flag on it where you can determine where you can indicate whether or not you want the scroll bars to always show up 
or to show up only when there's content or to never show up. So it seemed like a good idea at the time to have the scroll bars not show up at all. So we wrapped it in a scroll window thinking that if the content overflowed then although there are no scroll bars the content would continue to go uh, would overflow but the overall scroll window would hold it in place. That is actually how it works in other UI toolkits. It just doesn't work that way here. However, following a course of logic, since the examples that the GTK team have put together show scroll bars that are active, either automatic or always, then it stands to reason that that is the scenario they've tested most often. And so we're going to put those scroll bars in place and see what that does for us. And by the way, to assuage our curiosity, what is this VXBand? Well, as you can see, it adds vertical space. It has little to do with sizing, but there is a context word there where expand equals true, and that tells us that there are there's a relationship between VXBand and um, having the expand um, flag set to true. So we had turned off that expand flag or that yeah that expand flag and we set vexpand to false but now let's get everything back to the way we've had it because our initial settings were good we only had the issue with the scroll bars and once we account for that we can basically um, test out our theory and see how well it works in practice And the moment of truth ar arrives. We know that this feed was okay. It's when we go into Pharonix is where we are having the issues. So let's find the right one. Oh, it was TechCrunch. So there we are. We got a bevy of content. We got scroll bars. And we have stable layout. The article content area fills up the screen. And it looks the way we want it to look in terms of overall layout. Now what we do about that actual content that um, remains to be seen but the view article button activates appropriately and we have our connection off uh, for the reasons stated earlier and now we have a working program that does the things that um, we want it to do and the only way is up from this standpoint and so this is how you take more steps towards hello world to the universe and we've gone beyond hello world and now we are moving towards hello world to the universe or hello universe so um, that is the final example in this, um, this segment, and um, hopefully you were well informed on the possibilities for C, C++, and um, how they can be unified with namespaces and um, using references from the past, such as uh, David Hansen's great book, C, interfaces and implementations.